You know, I hate to say it, especially considering all of the blood, sweat, and tears that the Vancouver Canucks ended up shedding out over the past few months, but nowadays, in March of 2022, it feels like the Vancouver Canucks are no longer a movement anymore, but rather they're just a commodity once again. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean, when the Vancouver Canucks were actively, really pushing hard for the playoffs and they won seven in a row under Boudreau and you saw the entire city cheering out, Bruce, there it is, you saw the energy, you saw the bounce back wins, you saw the effort that they would go out there and give out every night. It felt like you were a part of something bigger than yourself when you watched those games live. It was hype, it was exciting, seeing the team just claw, fight, and scratch their way back into the playoff picture one game at a time. Well, ever since the losses to Detroit, and then of course Calgary yesterday, and then Buffalo today, it kind of feels like these Canucks games are now just a commodity again. The prices on the tickets are going down. I mean, today was a Sunday night, so I had a lot of my personal friends at this one, participating in the wave and singing the Ayo, the Freddie Mercury thing and all that. They're just at the game because the tickets are a little bit cheaper. Now you're watching Buffalo play. It's not like you're watching Connor McDavid or anything. No disrespect to Rasmus Dahlin. And so now from here until the end of the season, I'm kind of just going to be watching these Canucks games with maybe a little less expectations. Sure, they are my favorite team, and sure, if they win games, that's cool. But if they lose games and thus lower their draft position for the 2022 NHL entry draft, I would not be too upset with that either. This game against Buffalo kind of had all of that as well. As long as this team goes out there and provides us with some highlights that I can actually watch and be like, damn, that's pretty cool. I think they're doing a good job. And I also wanted to talk about a few more things before we started off this commentary on the game. John Garrett, towards the end, after the game was over, after the Buffalo Sabres scored the 3-2 goal in overtime, Garrett was talking about how some of the swagger and the fight and the mojo that the team had when Bruce Boudreau recently came in. You know, that attitude that the Canucks are not going to go down without a fight. They're going to try to get every point they can. And when they don't get a point, they're going to bounce back even harder in the next game. You saw that attitude when Bruce Boudreaux came in. It's why they won so many games in a row. Garrett kind of insinuated that, yeah, that attitude sort of started to deplete a little bit starting like a few weeks ago, and it's very unfortunate to say, but I do agree with John Garrett on this specific point. I do love the man. Garrett is an absolute legend. It's just, he's got a point. So, when it comes to this game, of course, 3-2 Buffalo overtime, you get it, you get it. There was a bad start again, Casey Middlestad scores right off the bat, so there you go, there's a staple of Vancouver hockey nowadays. Even Bruce Boudreaux says he doesn't know what the heck is going on with this team, and that the Vancouver Canucks of 21-22 are the worst team he has ever coached when it comes to their consistency at the start of games, especially recently, it's been a big, big problem. But the Canucks end up getting a 1-0 goal early on in the first period. I don't really have too many notes written out for this one because I'm just kind of watching it with, you know, half my attention focused on the game and the other half focused on all the trades. By the way, we uploaded eight videos today and seven yesterday. This will be the ninth video of today, and then we're expecting to do a little bit more because the trade deadline is tomorrow. So yeah, I've been pretty busy. I hope ad rates on March are pretty good for me personally, but either way... The second period is where the Vancouver Canucks start getting their production, and it's all started by JT Miller. This is a really good rush where Luke Shen goes over to Connor Garland. He one-touch passes it to Miller, who's coming right down Main Street through the middle. He's protecting the puck on his backhand. He quickly shifts it to the forehand. He shoots it up and over the goaltender's glove, and the play continues. Okay, what the heck? It looked like it went off the post. It looked like it was in, but the Sabres are coming back the other way now. The referees didn't stop it. The goal horn didn't go off. The sound effects guy didn't blast the smoke machine. There was no lights on the ice or anything. I guess it stayed out. Okay, it's out. And then eventually it's stopped up by Demko on the other side. There's some penalties because a scrum ensues between Connor Garland and Dylan Cousins. But eventually the guys up there in Toronto on the phones, they review the play and they're like, wait, that's a goal. That JT Miller shot did not go off the front post. It went off the back post. It's 1-1 Vancouver. So JT Miller has that super good point streak. He's got two points a game or whatever it is in that streak. He goes two points without a game against Detroit, against Calgary, and now he's got himself a goal, a beautiful one at that, to tie the game up at one. 
Eventually, there is a play on the other side. It's an absolutely terrible one where the puck is out behind the goal line and Tyler Myers is there on the side of the net trying to block the centering pass, but it goes right through him and eventually it's Jeff Skinner who takes it right on the doorstep and just shoots it over Demko and his pads. Demko was kind of expecting Myers to block it and he sort of did, but he didn't have good coverage on the guy on the opposite side, which gave Skinner all the opportunity to just take it, dangle it, and put it home. 2-1 Buffalo on what was an absolutely just difficult situation for Thatcher Demko. I feel really bad for the guy. Eventually, though, towards the end of the second period, there are some pretty good highlights, too. The Canucks get a power play after getting hemmed in their own zone, and this one was all started by Brock Besser. By the way, Besser, I do not think he had the best game in the world here tonight, but we'll get a little bit more into Besser as this video goes on. On the power play, hey, easy play. Miller to Horvat. He shoots, he scores. It's a beautiful feed. Miller gets himself his second point on the night. That's kind of what I'm personally cheering for more and more as the season goes on. If Miller gets traded, if Miller sticks around, I think he's probably going to stick around for the end of the season. Miller, I want to see this guy hit 30 goals. I want to see him hit however many freaking points he is on pace for, 90-something now. Yeah, let's see that. I don't care how bad the Canucks are on paper after they sell away all their assets tomorrow. Let's see Miller break these records. But... Of course, I gotta give credit to the captain himself, too. Bo Horvat ties the game 2-2. Thatcher Demko also had a great moment at the end of the second where he stacked the pads on a beauty save. Again, the Vancouver Canucks kind of hanging him out to dry because that's what they've been doing most of the year, and it forces Demko into a very precarious situation that he redeems tenfold with a beautiful, beautiful save. The third period starts out, and... We get ourselves a Brock Besser cross crease that comes like seven minutes in. I don't know why I said started out in the third period. It's just something that I noticed. Bo Horvat had a cross crease chance to Brock Besser, and he took way too long to shoot. Brock had a few good looks at the net right here. They either went right into the chest of the goaltender or they went wide. We still haven't found that consistent snipage top cheese like he had in his rookie season in Brock Besser this year. And so, with the qualification thing, with the 7.5 qualifying offer, with the RFA status, when I think about all this stuff, it really gets me thinking about tomorrow. And not just about Besser, but like Tyler Mott and Luke Shen and some of the other players that suited up for the Vancouver Canucks here tonight. Have we just seen the last game of these players in Vancouver sweaters? I know for Shen, it's kind of difficult to believe that because he came back after going to Tampa the first time, but Tyler Mott, Shen have been very widely speculated to being prime trade candidates for the Canucks. You, of course, have the other guys that are a lot better than Mott and Shen, like Brock Besser. You would probably contend that his overall status as a player is of a higher magnitude and thus could fetch a better return. You have other guys like Garland that maybe on the move. I mean, there have been discussions about him and trade talks for sure. That's what all the NHL insiders are saying. And then you have the untouchables, or not really untouchables, but yeah, okay, let's say PD and Hughes are untouchables, but then let's say JT Miller is so good that he's virtually untouchable now because nobody's going to shell out a price that would be appropriate in a potential Miller trade. But going back to the game over here, the Vancouver Canucks do not score any goals in the third. Nobody scores any goals in the third. It goes over to overtime and... Yeah, Bo Horvat makes an absolutely terrible read. Rasmus Dahlin is the guy who gets the puck on the right point for Buffalo, and he comes in with some speed cutting into the middle. And it's the easiest place to read in the world. I was screaming at my TV once Dahlin took his first few steps coming towards the goal. I was like, okay, he's going to cut to the middle. He's going to cut to the middle. He's going to cut to the middle. And then he cut to the middle, and Bo Horvat completely plays himself out of position. He's back-checking, trying to get to Darlene. Instead of covering the middle, he goes completely to the outside and removes himself from the play, causing Rasmus Darlene to have a prime lane right through. He shoots at five hole, it's in, and Darlene has himself, what is that, like his second point on the night? Like, he was really good today. But either way, we're talking about the trade deadline tomorrow. I'll just end this video off right here by saying, you know, it wasn't really a great last game for some of these guys. Like, I don't really think anybody aside from Miller and Demko played particularly well, quote-unquote. But whatever happens to Tyler Mott, whatever happens to Luke Shen or Tanner Pearson or Connor Garland or, dare I even say, a Brock Besser, it was a good run. Pretty good run, right? Who knows?
Let me know in the comments all your thoughts about the next 12-ish hours worth of NHL trade content, and if we're going to see any of these guys in Vancouver Canucks sweaters on Wednesday, when the Vancouver Canucks suit back up, Travis Dermott will be in the lineup, and we will likely see the new faces, new places all over the map. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. The Vancouver Canucks lose 3-2 to two to the Buffalo Sabres in overtime. I hope you enjoyed this British Rajas Rolls 9 and bye.